Hey guys, we're gonna do a quick video for you on zeroing the AR. We've done plenty before where we talk about the mechanics of shooting. So first and foremost, if you're gonna zero a gun, you gotta be as steady as can be because you can't you can't rely on what your data's telling you if you're unable to shoot a group. So you have to be able to shoot a group. We're gonna be working off of my zero, a very popular zero, the 5200, not mine like I invented it, but the one that I have on my guns. The first question you gotta ask yourself when you zero any gun, pistol, long gun, whatever it is, is what do you want that zero to do for you? And I think the misconception is that a zero is somehow changing something with the gun. All you're doing is working with the trajectory of the gun. So as a gun is tilted off of a horizontal axis, you're trying to figure out where that bullet's going to be somewhere down that away. So we're on the 200 yard range at Aurora Sportsman's Club today. And I'm gonna confirm my zeros at 10 yards. So why would I do that? Well, Frank Proctor kind of made this famous. And again, not taking anything away from Frank, nobody has the market on math, right? Because that's what this is. So what Frank did was he looked at a ballistic calculator, which I printed a few out here for this zero. And what he was trying to figure out was at 50 yards and at 200 yards, where would that bullet be here at 10? So that you could kind of get that zero started and then confirm it out at 50 and 200. So we're gonna do a couple things for you today. We're gonna do this zero, which uh, we'll make this available. This is a very simple zeroing target that we use in class. You've got four points. Uh, black, the black mark is point of aim. Red mark is point of impact. You got four of them. And then we've also got a couple of our logos on there and a little crosshair in the center that you can just use uh, for other marksmanship tasks. This is on a uh, what, 11 by uh, eight and a half by 17 piece of paper? We have a longer size too. Okay. And of course you can make this yourself. A couple factors that you have to know. You have to know height over bore. So this is only gonna work if you have a standard AR optic, which is 2.6 inches over the bore. And what that's basically gonna do is it's gonna put your point of aim and point of impact about 1.9 inches apart at 10 yards. So this isn't something that you can just do at any distance. It's gotta be 10 yards, not 10.5 yards, not 9.5 yards, 10 yards, if you're trying to use this math correctly. One thing I wanna show you guys, and this is something that's important. So a moment ago, I said to you, all you're trying to do is figure out what you wanna do with the gun. So for me, uh, like my 10 and a half inch radian and my longer 16 incher, all I'm ever gonna do with these guns is shoot out to a few hundred yards. Longer, sure, if I know where the bullet's gonna hit. But if you're gonna have a gun like this, say for your cruiser, if you're a copper or a SWAT cop, uh, as you're going about your duties collecting bad guys, or if you're gonna use it in training, so if you're a, like a training junkie and you go to classes, find out what the class entails. If you're working 300 yards and in, you need a certain zero. If you wanna take, say, the, the longer gun there and go shoot coyotes at five or 600 yards, not that that gun's built for that, but it would do it, you need to know where that bullet's going to be. So you may not want a 50 200 zero if you plan on most of your shots being four, five, 600 yards. That said, projectiles and uh, velocities now come into play. So I don't wanna go deep in the weeds on that, but you need certain data. And we did a couple videos a while back on this, which you can go back into the channel and check out. But what do you need to know? You need to know bullet uh, type. You need to know bullet coefficient. Coefficient is the word describing the ability of that bullet to cut through the air. So think of like a, uh, a shotgun slug, very bad bullet coefficient. Think of a 223, like we're shooting today with a boat tail on it a much better coefficient. That sucker can cut through the air a lot easier than a big fat like wad cutter or slug. So you need to know the bullet weight, bullet coefficient, you need to know the velocity. Oftentimes people say, well, I wanna know the barrel length. The barrel length doesn't mean shit. You need to know what the actual velocity is. So when normally when you look at a box, we've got a bunch of ammo on the ground, you'll see a bullet that was tested through a very long barrel because it's gonna give the manufacturer a high degree of accuracy and it's gonna give the manufacturer a really high velocity rating, which looks cool for you when you put it in your cart off the shelf. 
But if you're shooting a little 10 and a half or like Todd a moment ago said he's got a shorty, you're gonna get a completely different set of uh, numbers through a chronograph. Why is that important? Because a slower bullet is gonna drop a lot faster out at 100, 200, 300, 400 yards. This 50 to 200 zero, super simple. I'm gonna show you with my gun uh, what a good calculator will tell you. Now, a bullet calculator, a drop calculator, is only as good as the data you put into it, and it's also only as good as what the creator of the app or of the calculator, their ability to do good math. So if you round up too much, or you're not studious in the mathematics when you're creating one of these spreadsheets, that's really what they are, the shit doesn't work out there. So today we're confirming the math. The math is good, I've checked it across a few. Strelock is probably one of the best uh, uh, bullet comp drop calculators, pardon me, on the market, but there's others. Hornady has a really good one. And if you're a super sharp dude, you can do the math yourself. But check this out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the point of aim, so my dot or my crosshairs on the black dot at 10 yards. Because we're 2.6 inches over bore, this round is still climbing at this point, it's climbing. So I'm gonna be 1.9 inches. That should be the difference, 1.9. But as we start going out, I've got a 50 yard target, a 100 yard target, a 150 yard target all the way out there, and then all the way back on the berm, we've got a 200 yard target. So according to the math, at 50, which is out over here, we'll need to move one of these targets for me to shoot past it, we should be on the money. At 100, I should be about one and a third inches high, okay? One and a third inches high. All the way out at 150, I should be about one and a quarter inches high. You guys, what you gotta think about here is most guys can't shoot within an inch or an inch and a quarter at 150 yards. So you're really, you're starting to deal with shit that the average marksman and their gun and their ammo is not even capable of. And then out to 200, I should be back on the money. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna validate that. We're gonna validate it on actual targets, not assuming that this zero works. And then I brought out my 55 grain uh, Supervel ammo, full metal jacket uh, that we use. Uh, I brought out the 62 grain solid copper from uh, uh, Supervel. I've got some Hornady tap and I've got some Hornady, uh, which one did I bring out? I think the VMAX. This is a great varmint round. Uh, that should do well. I've got some low-end uh, reloads from a company that's now defunct. You can see the box there. These are a soft lead bullet. And then I've also got a, uh, another full metal jacket from Fioki, just so we can compare it. And why this is important is a lot of guys, man, they go print this shit off, they shoot it at 10 yards, and then they never validate it. So we're gonna try it. Oh, and then also at 200, we've got a piece of steel out there with a six inch plate. So I'm gonna bet that Without changing anything on these guns, I can hit that two hundo plate reliably with all this different ammo. And if we can't, we'll we'll check it out on the bigger plate and see where we're dropping. And we'll just see how it works. So I'm gonna prone out here. I've got a couple of my my uh, bean bags to get uh, behind the gun good. I'll throw my ears on, and I'm just gonna call out to you what we're doing, and we'll talk through it. Sound good? We got we got Todd chamber flag and guns. Safety first. And we do have this, for those of you watching, we've got this bay closed off. And we are at Aurora Sportsman's Club today, which is fun. Just, uh, I got out here today to film this. And uh, Todd, who's, you're on the board here, aren't you? Todd's on the board. He's helping us. By the way, Todd, uh, if you look him up, Mr. Vandermeid, a pillar of the community of Second Amendment advocates for years, worked very hard to change laws here in Illinois. The Supervel will go first. I'll just shoot at this one real quick. And then we're just gonna run through both of them at these various targets. Eyes and ears, everybody. Yes. Give me some dot action. Confirming that I'm not in any way gonna shoot over the berm and I'm nowhere near it. Safety first. And as always, if you're shooting a dot, you want to tone that dot down as much as possible when trying to work a zero like this. You want to see a real defined aiming point. So 
come to a good natural shooting position and I feel good, my hips got my dot squared up nice, safety's off, range is hot. So when I get a good sight picture, I'm gonna press a couple shots off. I'm gonna call that one and done. That went right through the red dot, so no sense in wasting ammo on that. That was good. Flag the chamber on this gun, and we'll confirm the other one. Now this one, I was zeroing a few weeks ago at the indoor range, and lighting sucked in there, and I had a real hard time seeing what I was doing. So I might need to make an adjustment or two to this gun and if needed, then we'll just adjust as necessary. Everybody still got their eyes and ears on? Yep. Safety off. I'm gonna call that good. No sense in wasting ammo. So. Now what we'll do, all this gun's cleared out real quick. I am going to drop that 10 yard target because it is hosing me. So I'm just gonna walk out real quick, turn these muzzles this away, and I'm gonna step out and just drop that cardboard. Downrange. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll run through the shorty first and then we'll go to the longer gun. Flag out. So first one up is just the 55 grain full metal jacket from Superbell. So out here we've got a blue post-it note. That'll be a good enough target zone for me. At, uh, Posty's about three inches. So again, because we're really working on accuracy, Get your natural point of aim. Move your hips around till you feel good. Start slowing your breath. If you can't do it here, you're not gonna do it under duress, right? So right now, as I'm looking through the optic, if I move my hips a little bit, oh, nice, that puts me right on it. Eyes and ears, guys. Good. One and done. I'm gonna drop that and just switch right over. So now I've got the Hornady uh, what do they call this one? This is the VMAX, 55 grain VMAX. Same thing. Load it up. Safety off. Pitch that out. So I don't make a big mess here. Keep those together. Now we've got the solid copper from Supervel. This is not meant to be a long range round. A couple hundred yards and in should do just fine. This is meant to be a barrier blind round for shooting through things like windshields, car doors, interior doors, uh, and having massive expansion with this monolithic copper. Very nice ammunition. All right, one and done. Now we've got the cheap reloads from the company that's now defunct. And these are soft point, uh, 55 grain. All right. Now, if we were trying to get super scientific, we could get a rest out here and go to town. Hornady Tap, this has been around for a long time. A lot of coppers carry this stuff. It is a precursor to what this Supervel does now. All right, one and done. That felt hot compared to this other ammo. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to the other rifle, flag this gun. 
grab this guy. This place is so good, they got their own chamber flags. 55 grain super belt. And because I got it, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Why not? Let me take a look at that. Uh-oh. One of them is about an inch low. And we'll have to see when you're editing which one it was. I felt good on all of them. The rest of them are all in the paper. So let's hit this. Good. Dump that. Was the, uh, the next one I shot was the VMAX, right? Do them in the same order. I will tell you that uh, people call a break like this, this is Radian's gun and this thing shoots soft as can be. They call that a buddy because it's super annoying when you're next to somebody. This is a Super Bell Solid Copper. Easy peasy. As we're going through this, I'm thinking for the viewer, it's gonna be really boring to watch us shoot through each of these at all of these distances. So I think we'll throw a couple at a hundo, we'll throw a couple at 150, and then we're gonna stretch it out. It, I don't know if I'm thinking, and tell me if you agree, Drew, it, it, I don't think it's gonna make for good video to just to watch me sit and shoot, shoot, shoot. What is important though, what I want you to see is where they are impacting on the target at these distances. So now we're to that cheap shit. All in the posty. And I'm not being super careful to be in the middle of the posty. I'm just putting the uh, dot or the crosshairs onto the blue. If I see blue behind it, I'm pressing. Good, good, good. Pull the cones. I'll grab the other one, Tad. So now we'll go to one hundo. And I'm thinking, like I said, I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'll pick um, 55 grain full metal jacket, we'll do the Super Vell, and we'll do the, one, we'll do the cheap ammo, okay? We'll do that and we'll run these other ones just because it's gonna take too long to sit here and do these. Uh, and it's not gonna tell us anything that I don't already know. If somebody watches and you're like, hey, I wanted to see them all start paying me by the hour. I charge a lot, okay? So we'll start with the 55 grain. All right, I'm gonna get a little more steady now because a hundo is no joke on a three inch target with a red dot. And according to our data, we should be about, what did I say, one four high. So if I was to be perfect and I held in the middle of that three inch post-it note, if I'm able to do my job, the round should hit right on the top edge of the post-it note if I hold dead center. That's what I'm gonna try to do. I don't have the greatest vision, but that's what we're out here working on. Get that bag underneath here. Bring the dot to brightness down a little bit too. Ooh, that's nice. Tell you what, people like low, low dollar dots, and I have some. There is nothing like a good aim point for the clarity of the dot. All right, here we go. All right, that's one. That's a 55 grainer. 55 grain full metal jacket, Super Vell. Here's the cheap, actually, here's the cheap stuff. That's the tap. I could tell just by looking at the quality of the brass. Oh, didn't see. There we go. Get back underneath it here. You may ask, why don't you have a tripod or a bipod or more bags? Because the premise here is what can you do with the shit that you carry 
in the condition that you carry it. If you're not walking around with a 10 inch pistol uh, AR with a tripod on it, I don't really give a shit. And I think that's a big fallacy in the modern world, all the stuff that we have. Run what you brung. Here's the uh, solid copper. And this is so the dudes weekend we got coming up. I'm gonna shut my mouth and shoot this. The dudes weekend that we got coming up, we shoot out to 600 yards with whatever your gun is. And guys will show up with 24 inch rifles and it's like, there ain't no way that that's the gun you keep in your truck or you've got in the back of your cruiser. You know, they've got something like this. And that's the whole premise is, what can you actually do with the gun that you carry or that you have in your possession or that you would find in your possession if you had problems, you know? All right, so I've got the 55 grain I don't need the illumination on. What I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna hold the same on all these targets and we can watch as the bullets walk around, if they do. All right, that felt good. Cheapo ammo. The one complaint people have with this Night Force, for what it costs, it costs more than my first car, the glass is so clear, but because for what it was built for, the, uh, the center dot really takes up a lot of real estate on the target as you start zooming in. But that's not, this is not built to be a precision rifle optic. It's built for what I'm doing, a couple hundred yards and in. So this is the 62 grain solid copper hollow point from Superville. That one felt like I was high and I think it was. All right, so we'll clear these out, chamber flag them, control the muzzles, put the cones out on the range, and we'll go move cameras and get set up at 150. We'll see where they appear, and unfortunately for you guys, I'm not that good a shooter, so we'll see where these went. That one felt high, the last one. How you doing, Drunus? Good. Drew's thinking, man, Mick said this was gonna be like a 10 minute video. Every time I say it's gonna be 10 minutes, it's more like two hours, isn't it, Drew? Uh, one hour. <laughs> so here's the fun thing. Yeah, I've got a few, I've got a few that are spread. Whoa! Whoa, man, one of those is like six inches high. That had that was those had to be the freaking red dot shots. Not impressive at all. Not impressed, I can't walk through this slop. I don't wanna walk through that slop at all. So now we're gonna go to 150, and then we'll go all the way out to two. I don't wanna this, I don't wanna make this too boring because you guys watching, you might be bored already, is like, all he's doing is walking back and forth and shooting. Yeah, but what I'm trying to do is confirm the zero of where these rounds are going. You dig? I'm trying to confirm where they're going. And what's interesting is we're getting wild different results with all these rounds because they all go different velocities. The 62 grain goes a way, is way slower than uh, the uh, 55 grainer because it wasn't built to go super fast. The uh, data that we've punched into the load calculator was for one load at one speed. So you put those through different guns and that's why we're seeing all of these hitting at different elevations, which is cool. That's that's the point of doing the data gathering. Yeah, they're all over. 
All right. By the way, I gotta say, I love this Victos jacket. This thing is like, it makes me feel like a Marvel superhero. All right, so we'll go back to it. We've got uh, the 55 grain. I'm gonna feed a few more of these 62, 62 grain solid coppers into the mag so we don't run low. Oop. You wanna be careful with your projectiles that you don't dent them up or bang them up. So if some of you guys watching this are like super long range guys and you're getting poo pooey at some of the practices we're using, shut up. The point is not, I, I could go get my bolt gun and sit down and go through that process. That's not what we're doing. That's not at all what we're doing. It's, it's the guns that you have, like Todd was just saying, um, shaking the gear out. Everybody got eyes and ears? So the 55 grain, we're at 150 yards now. And man, it's hard for me to, I don't got a lot that uh, I can go off of. So what I'm trying to do on these Ipsic targets, I put the blue uh, posties at the top of the A zone, which is just below shoulder height. So I'm kind of splitting the difference. Um, some people with super eyesight might have a better time all right, safety off. That was the 55 grain full metal jacket. Here's the soft point, not, not fancy reman ammo. You may ask why I chose these couple of rounds. It doesn't matter. Well, the Supervel I chose because it's what I shoot, but I wanted you just to see a disparate, the disparity of accuracy and of how this ammo works at various zeros. You gotta know what your ammo does. Don't just trust what somebody on the web tells you. Here's the 50 uh, or 62 grain solid copper now. All right, flag this guy, switch it up. All right. That was the 55 grain Supervel full metal jacket. Got the low cost soft ammo, soft point lead. And the 55 grain, 62 grain rather, solid copper. There we go. Check this out. So, can you tell which one of these you think was my zero? This one? So that, all of those guns are zeroed with just one ammo. Just one. I'm guessing, and the tail will tell, but you know, these, these rounds are running completely different velocities. Pretty interesting, isn't it? You might not think it's that big of a deal at 150 yards, that is quite a deal, quite a deal. You're talking about inches and inches, inches and inches. Check it out. All the way back by the trucks, zero, right? Here, 200. So if you've got a 50, 200, zero, which again, don't get hung up on any zero. The zero's just gotta work for you. Point of aim, point of impact. So from here on out, the bullet's dropping to the earth. Um, it's, it's already reached its apex at this point. It's not going any farther up. You see the high point between a hundo and two hundo, the bullets were climbing uh, and we see that. And now we should be back down. So Drew's setting the cameras up. So 
What we'll do next, I'm gonna run some rounds now onto the steel at two. I changed my mind on shooting cardboard, made a decision on the fly here. I can't see well enough at two hundo with a red dot to have any, I could shoot and hit the cardboard, but I can't really see if what I'm aiming at, I'm gonna hit. Um, my, by that, I mean the postie is just too, too far away for me to see with my eyes. So we'll shoot at that steel. It's very easy for me to uh, differentiate the steel from the white backer. Um, Todd did me a favor and painted it red, which is gonna make it hard with my red dot, but whatever. And we're looking to see if we can actually get effective hits. You know, everybody in the talk, in the chat rooms, all the hard asses that shoot guns, uh, talk about, oh, my gun's good out to 400 yards. Eh, it's only as good as your ability to, to know your dope and get the hits. And marksmanship is just as big as, as the equation as the quality of the gun. You know, having good gear is nice, but good gear doesn't mean shit if you can't align the sights or the dot or the, the, the crosshairs and keep the gun still while you press the trigger. So let's, uh, let's ring this steel and then shut this bitch down because Todd's got a zero or rifle too. We've got that piece of uh, TA Target steel out at the two hondo, and we've got a six inch head swinger. Pretty reliably can get that at a hundo with my aim point. I can't say the last time I tried at two, it's been a while. And we've got the 55 grain full metal jacket, super belt, and listen for the ring a ding i'm just going to aim for the silhouette at this point and i'll try to hit that head swinger it's very hard to discern the uh, head swinger from the red dot eyes and ears everybody good okay So we got a couple of hits, huh? I'll go for that head swinger now with the 55 grain. Should be dead on according to our dope. Should be. With this gun, with this ammo. I gotta get super steady here. There it was. So it took me two to hit that little six inch head, which I'm not gonna lie, for me, at this distance, uh, had we sprayed that a different color than red, which it's not a big deal, um, it blends into the body. I see where it is. I'm gonna try to get another one. I don't wanna just rest on one. Nope. Nope. It's a guessing game for me. It's not moving it much at this distance, is it? All right, we'll try the, uh, the junk soft points now. That had a lot more energy behind it, didn't it? And that was a good head hit. That was a, that was a hard hold. That's the soft point. Ah, bolt lock on that one. We'll switch to the solid copper 62 grain stuff now. I think I'm shooting over it. And put one into the center of the silhouette. 
That's a hit. hit. Had to aim, so had to hold up a little higher. We'll grab the other gun now. Put a couple of these back in. It's very hard with just the dot to see what I'm even doing out there at that distance. Chamber flag. All right. And if you're watching this like, oh my God, there's ammo everywhere. I know what I'm grabbing and what I'm not. Relax, Francis. Relax. All right, so should have a little easier time now with some magnification. But I'm not gonna lie, the um, big crosshair on here, which is what everybody's beef was, the center dot on this optic does not do you a lot of favors. So at 200 yards, that center dot is as big as the plate almost. All right, so we'll shoot for that swinger now. That was a good hit. There it goes. So with this, I can actually aim to the outside of it. I can see. All right, so easy hits on that head shot from here on that head plate with the 55 grain. Let's throw the 62 in now and see if I can still hold and get hits. Why do I want to know this? Because this is the ammo that's in my gun at home. Not that I'm going to be shooting 200 yards away, but I want to know. Yep. All right, I gotta, I gotta get back to good breath control here. I'm running around too much and popping up off the mat too much. Yep. Not ending on that note. One more, back to the 55 grain. So those 62s were on, which is cool. On a six inch target, you know, we're not shooting bullseye here. All right. So what do we do? What we figured out here was that the trajectory of all these different rounds is in fact not the same. The paper doesn't lie. When Drew edits this together, you'll see those rounds hitting in different spots. I'm not some long range marksman, professional, awesome shooter, uh, but with a aim point and a, uh, a low, low power variable optic, we were getting head hits out to 200 yards. Uh, if we sat here all day and worked on it and we got went out and painted that a bright color so that it would differentiate a little bit from the dot, that would help. Um, not an excuse, the point is, and we got enough hits that I see what's up. Uh, when I got really into my breath and uh, got steady and stopped slapping on the trigger, because I didn't feel too much slapping, but I definitely wasn't being as conscious of my breath on some of those misses. You have to, once you're out past 100 yards, every little thing's important. Now, guys that are shooting 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards and farther, to them, 200 yards is nothing. 
but guess what? They're not shooting a dot, okay? And this is factory ammunition as well. This is bargain ammo. We're not shooting match ammo, which makes a big difference. So for me, people like to say minute of bad guy. If I can shoot a six inch target from zero to 200 yards with the gun that I keep around my house and your cruiser, if that's what you do at your office to, to protect life and limb, I'm happy with that. Six inch target, 200 and in, look at much closer than, than 100. You better be a hell of a lot more accurate than six inches, but um, there's no gimme. Go zero your stuff, stick to the ammo that you figure out how it works. Don't just assume because it's the same caliber you're gonna get the same result. And then if you go to class, show up with your shit zeroed. Be good. Todd, you want the mat or are you gonna shoot from the bench? So hey, we hope you guys enjoyed the short video, but also in addition, we might as well share with you a couple of the board members out here at Aurora Sportsman. I'll ask them a few questions. You guys, if you're interested, like I said, people come from all over to attend trainings here and uh, big shoots like the zombie shoot. I've got Mike and I have got Todd. Both of you guys have been members here for years, yep. right? You both put in a lot, you're here volunteering right now, yep. right? Everybody's volunteer that works here. You guys have hundreds of of members, the elevator pitch. Why be a member of Aurora Sportsman's Club? Because this is a range that you can do stuff you can't do anywhere else in Northern Illinois. So shoot and move. We, it, once you're a member, we allow you to get holster draw certified so you can draw from the holster. There are very few indoor ranges that'll even let you try something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we let you set up your own target array. Does, does that, um, like a class, you come out here and there's a range officer that teaches the holster stuff? Do you verify? skills it, it's There's a number of avenues to okay. do that uh, there are guys that can certify sign off on it uh, i mean if you just kind of demonstrate that you can do it safely and <clears throat> then uh, then you can get certified that way or we run classes where okay aren't can get get the right safety. skills and that's cool because if you're a member out here you know you're not around a bunch of yahoos which is scary right. when you're at big ranges like this is. You don't know, but we don't have that here. And then we'll let you, you know, if you've got your own steel, as long as you're at the appropriate distance, you can set your own steel up on a bay. Okay. You can run pistol drills, or if you want to shoot and move with an, with an AR, you want to set up, you know, a target array and walk through it, we let you do that here. So and, and this has got key fob, uh, key code kind of access. So members come as long as it's inside operating hours. 8 a.m. till sunset. Awesome. I think awesome. one of the things that sets us apart, uh, aside from the fact that we have a 600 that we didn't mention, uh, <clears throat> which we have a, a separate certification for the 600 yard range. Just, you know, you have to show your dope, to show you that you know your dope, uh, so that we don't have people sending rounds over the range. Uh, but one other thing that sets us apart is our, our uh, vast array of programs, you know, from black powder to three gun, you know. And you got like experts here, different guys that are members or gals, I shouldn't be sexist, that are passionate about certain parts of the sport. And Absolutely. That's it? Yeah. That's cool. So we cover the entire gamut. And so for the 2020 season, uh, there will be two organized events every weekend of the month. Oh, cool. Going through from starting, uh, we got the train up for PPR coming up the uh, next weekend, and, or this weekend. And then uh, from there, um, we're, we start the whole season off. So we'll, you can shoot uh, an Outlaw Steel Challenge match. You got three gun, you got PR, PPR, IDPA, USPSA. Boom. So Which PR is our, our practical rifle program. We were talking about that a little bit. Basically like uh, IDPA with, with a, you know, a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, what if I wanted to shoot a lever action? Uh, we would go Try it. Uh, I want we to. We got <laughs> guys that show up with Durans and the like. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's so, cool. Uh, we had a, uh, a member that would, uh, on occasion, uh, shoot those. Oh, really? That's super cool. So basically, I wanted to make sure you guys understand this is here, it's a resource. Yes, you gotta pay uh, to become a member. Yes, there's a process to that. You don't just show up and hand somebody five bucks. Uh, but check them out online. 
chances are you'll meet these guys out here and others. And if you have not thought about becoming a member here, you can join a class like ours that's held here. Come see the place. You won't have free reign of it, but you can see it, see how nice and clean it is, check out the berms and all that good stuff, and, and then make your decision then if you want to try to go through the enrollment process. Yeah, you can find us on Facebook uh, as well as uh, aurorasc.org is our website. Come check it out. Cool. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.